Imagine embarking on a once-in-a-lifetime journey to visit the iconic wreck of the Titanic, only for tragedy to strike. On June 16, 2023, five brave individuals stepped aboard the Titan submersible, unaware of the impending doom that awaited them. As they ventured deeper into the abyss, the unthinkable happened. Lost communication, a frantic search, and the devastating confirmation that the sub had imploded. Join us as we unravel the gripping story of the Titanic sub-disaster, exploring the haunting question, did four critical flaws seal their fate? Could this heart-wrenching catastrophe have been prevented? The answers lie in the depths of this captivating investigation. Before we submerge ourselves into the depths of this investigation, I must remind you to show your support by hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and ringing the notification bell. Let's begin! After setting sail on this captivating exploration, it's crucial to acknowledge the concerns that have surfaced regarding the safety and construction of the Titan submarine. While the vessel promised an unforgettable experience, whispers of unease surrounded its operation. You see, the Titanic submarine raised eyebrows as it was reported to have been operated using components from Camping World and even a PlayStation controller. The very foundation of the vessel seemed, to put it mildly, a bit shoddy. Ocean Gates, the company responsible for the Titan sub, had a safety rating that left many questioning its reliability. Despite the apparent shortcomings, five adventurous Titanic enthusiasts paid exorbitant sums, reaching $250,000, for the chance to descend 12,500 feet in the Titan submarine. Little did they know that their daring expedition would eventually become intertwined with controversy. Questions have emerged as to why the safety concerns raised by Ocean Gate's own experts seemingly went ignored. One engineer, who dared to express apprehensions, found himself dismissed from his position, further fueling doubts about the decision-making surrounding the Titan submarine. Astonishingly, there was even an individual who, after scrutinizing the construction and operation of the vessel, refused to step foot aboard. And for those who did venture into the depths aboard the sub, one passenger later described their experience as an act of self-destruction in an interview with a newspaper. So, let's refocus our attention and shine a light on some of the most notable flaws that might have played a role in the Titanic submarine's tragic fate. Flaw 1, Hardware Components. On their website, OceanGate proudly proclaimed that the vessel was a fusion of custom engineering and off-the-shelf components, a combination they argued made repairs easier. It turns out that some of the sub's lighting fixtures and handles were purchased from none other than Camping World, a retailer primarily known for outdoor camping gear. This revelation, shared by reporter David Pogue, who had the opportunity to journey in the sub last year, raises eyebrows. Rusted scaffolding was even used as ballast, further calling into question the level of sophistication and polish employed in the sub's construction. Mr. Pogue recounted his experience, stating that it was a little less sophisticated. It seems that the reality of the sub's components, such as the utilization of a PlayStation controller for steering, fell short of expectations. Describing the craft as jerry-rigged or MacGyvered, Mr. Pogue shed light on the less-than-sophisticated nature of some of the sub's crucial elements. There were parts of it that seemed to me to be less sophisticated than I was guessing. You know, that you, you drive it with a PlayStation video controller, literally a Bluetooth wireless controller. Uh, some of the ballasts are old, rusty construction pipes. Um, they, when they seal you in, uh, and they do seal you in, by the way, with 18, there are 18 bolts that seal you in from the outside, and they only do 17 of them. Because the 18th one is way up high, so they don't bother with it. When Mr. Pogue confronted Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate, about these concerns, he claimed that the pressurized container where passengers sit was indeed state-of-the-art. Rush asserted that it was crafted from titanium and carbon fiber, involving the expertise of esteemed entities like NASA, Boeing, and Washington University. Flaw 2. Erratic Communications Moving forward in our investigation of the Titanic submarine's flaws, we now come to the second crucial flaw, erratic communications. Even the owner of the sub, Stockton Rush, acknowledged his concerns about potential scenarios where the sub could become stuck and unable to surface. While he maintained that the sub would still be safe even if other components failed, the issue of reliable and consistent communication raises significant red flags. During Mr. Pogue's own voyage in the sub, there was an incident where the sub lost communication with its support ship. 
The sub got disoriented, failed to locate the Titanic wreck, and eventually vanished after a five-hour period. These troubling events unfolded while Mr. Pogue was on board, leaving him with first-hand experience of the communication challenges that plagued the sub. In the aftermath of this incident, discussions were held regarding the installation of an emergency beacon on the sub. The purpose of such a beacon would be to facilitate locating the sub in case of emergencies or unforeseen circumstances. However, it appears that these discussions failed to result in any tangible actions, leaving the sub without an additional safety measure. Are you loving this content so far? If so, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications, so you never miss out on our fascinating explorations. Now let's continue our journey. Flaw 3, No Safety Certificate Given that the Titan operated on a global scale, it fell outside the jurisdiction of any specific governmental regulatory body. Prior to boarding all passengers were required to sign an agreement acknowledging that the vessel was unregistered and considered an experimental design. According to Oceangate, the reason for the lack of certification stemmed from the revolutionary technology employed in the sub, which defied traditional industry paradigms. The company argued that obtaining certification for a vessel with such groundbreaking advancements would be an excessively time-consuming process, potentially taking several years. They claimed that adhering to pre-existing standards would hinder rapid innovation, as the clearance process could be detrimental to progress. Oceangate contended that classification alone was insufficient to guarantee safety, expressing skepticism towards the effectiveness of safety regulations. CEO Stockton Rush openly criticized the regulatory framework surrounding undersea craft, suggesting that safety regulations placed an unnecessary emphasis on passenger safety at the expense of innovation. In an interview with the Smithsonian, Rush questioned the growth and innovation within the industry, attributing it to the burdensome regulations in place. He even advised CBS News not to get out of bed if they sought complete safety, highlighting his belief that stringent regulations hinder progress. It's worth noting that while the Titanic submarine was not the first of its kind in this style for Mr. Rush, it was the first to be designed with tourism in mind. Alongside the exploration of the Titanic wreck, Rush had plans to visit heat vents and underwater battlegrounds, expanding the scope of the sub's potential ventures. He lauded the safety record of his company, boasting that there hadn't been an accident in 35 years. Flaw 4 Ignored Warnings from Engineers while Mr. Rush may have downplayed the risks associated with his endeavor, there were others who voiced their concerns long before the disappearance of the Titan. One such individual was David Lockridge, who had previously worked for Mr. Rush and became entangled in a legal dispute with Oceangate in 2018. Court records reveal that Lockridge expressed apprehension about the structural integrity of the sub's hull. He discovered that flammable materials were on board, and the viewing window was certified to a depth of only 4,000 feet, well below the 13,000 feet it would be diving to. Lockridge repeatedly urged Oceangate to obtain proper certification for the sub, warning them that failure to do so would jeopardize the safety of passengers. However, Lockridge was not the only one expressing concerns. One of Oceangate's early clients, Chris Brown, initially purchased a ticket for £80,000 after a night of socializing with a friend who had heard about the sub. However, as Brown began asking questions and delving deeper into the project, he quickly realized that the trip was not worth the inherent danger. Arthur Lobo, a German who did venture on the Titan, described the experience as a suicide mission and considered himself fortunate to have survived. Lobo initially claimed that the underwater vessel was practically unusable. During the dive, a piece fell off and had to be hastily reattached using zip ties. Furthermore, the sub encountered electrical issues, causing Lobo to express his nervousness about the need to return due to recurring problems, particularly with the battery systems. I was nervous that we have to go return, to go back because we got some problems like in the other dives uh, with the battery systems. The voices of engineers, industry leaders, and dissatisfied customers provide a resounding chorus of caution. Their warnings highlight the potential dangers that lay beneath the surface of the Titanic submarine's ill-fated journey. As we piece together the puzzle of this disaster, we're confronted with the troubling realization that these concerns were not heeded, ultimately contributing to the tragic events that unfolded. As we conclude our exploration of the Titan submarine and the four crucial flaws that may have contributed to its disaster, we are left with a haunting question. 
Could this tragedy have been prevented if the concerns raised by engineers were taken more seriously? We would love to hear your thoughts and insights on this captivating story. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing historical mysteries and thought-provoking discussions. See you in the next video.